this particular model is designed to um, detect chemical and radiological particles in the air within a, within a close proximity of the machine. The mm -hmm. idea is to be able to take this into a building or a cave uh, where soldiers might be going into to be able to detect specific particles within, within that particular building or cave. Uh, what that does is it allows us to expend a piece of equipment as opposed to a soldier, uh, thereby saving the lives of the soldiers. The robots are more expendable than soldiers are. We like to keep, being a soldier, we like to keep keep ourselves safe and alive. So this helps us in that in that endeavor. Plus, provides us important information back to determine exactly how we need to proceed in a particular environment. But for further detail, this is the this is the resident expert here. Hi, how are you? Uh, <laughs> Data, very nice to I'm meet John. you. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me, it appears that you have uh, infrared on your camera. I saw infrared LEDs. No. So the LEDs are just for illumination? Exactly. Mm. Uh, I'm impressed we didn't want people blinding themselves. You know, because they have two little cameras near the grippers, and if they're shining back, we didn't want to be um, I was wondering if you could tell me more details about your controls. I was actually kind of curious about how easy it is or uh, if... Sure. Okay. Um, and depending on what mode you're in, the pucks do something different. Now the basic mode is obviously the drive mode, which is in the top left. Um, and to change the mode, here's the mode button right here. Okay. So it just cycles through. Okay. There you are. Okay. Now there's three different speeds. There's normal speed, fast speed, and there's creep. So we're going to put it in creep mode for the demonstration. Okay. Um, and just to make it, I'm going to make sure nobody's around. Push the pulp forward to make it go forward. You know. Pull it back to go back. Okay. And you, you twist it. Okay, that's pretty easy. Yeah, and the left puck works the flippers in front. Okay. And uh, if you want to raise the arm or lift up the camera, you can put it in target mode. And you, this, this puck has six degrees of rotation, so I can pull it straight up and, and the camera will actually pull it straight up. Cool. So it has uh, temperature sensors to prevent overheating? Or? It does. If it okay. overheats, the brake will automatically come on so you can't use it. Okay. So if you pull it straight up, it goes up. <laughs> um, the search mode is a good mode to manipulate the camera. So you can actually turn the camera 360. Okay. So it does a full pan and tilt. Which company makes this? Is it Talon? Um, no, this no? is uh, the Packbot. It's made by okay, iRobot. And we just bought, we bought the robot and we bought the sensors, which are commercial off-the-shelf sensors, and we just integrated it. You know, kind of changed their software package a little bit. Is the, the camera interchangeable with other uh, equipments, or you buy a different Packbot pack for each task? No, I don't. I don't know. the The base chassis that we bought was made for EOD, mm -hmm. um, and we just we changed it ourselves to do what we wanted it to do. But I don't. As far as I know, Hackbot. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if our robot makes different <laughs> okay. payload bays or not. I noticed uh, in your controls you have a, almost a 3D simulation of what the robot's doing. Is that? Do you find that actually useful to? Drive the robot. You do. I do. Okay. Because most, more often than not, you're not looking at the robot. You can't see it. It's you know, it's down range. It's in a building, so you okay. don't know what it's doing. So it gives you very good depth. And there's different views of the screen. I can get a full screen. And this is from the attack camera that's on top. Now there's there's the drive camera that's down near the bottom. Um, so I can go to a, a two image view. And this is from the bottom of the robot. The oh, so there's camera. another camera. Yeah. Okay. The top. So it gives you a little better depth perception, but it's still a little awkward. It takes a little bit to get used to. Okay. The batteries are all about to go dead. So <laughs> that's what that means, battery power. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. So there's so, four different types of batteries? Um, the bottom two are actually for the OCU. 
okay. that are plugged in here. Um, the okay. top two are for the robot. You can put four batteries in the robot. Each battery gets about four to, I want to say like around four hours of driving okay. time, depending on the train. If you're in rough terrain, the, the time drops. So, you know, if you're climbing a lot of stuff, it may get down to two or three hours. Climbing okay. a lot of stairs. So. How much do these run for? I don't know. Yeah, I think we bought the chassis. I, I want to say around one hundred forty thousand dollars. I think direct and from. That includes the, the control uh, includes system as well. The okay. Yeah, but it doesn't include all the integration was done by ADM Advanced Design Manufacturing up at ECBC. And I don't know exactly how much they charge to do all the integration. The sensors, the multi-ray came from race systems and I think that was a couple thousand dollars. The LCD I think was a couple thousand dollars. Good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you find yourself replacing parts occasionally or is it very rugged you could pretty much treat it really badly and it'll handle it pretty well? Depends on the operator. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, good, that's, that's a good answer. <laughs> Tell me about the presets. Um, if you hit the arm preset button, there's if you want to climb stairs, there's a stair preset, a high preset. So depending on what you want to do, it just makes it a lot faster and easier to use and manipulate. So, so it actually just puts it into a ready position exactly. just to go up the stairs. Okay. Exactly. So I hit the, the drive reset and it's so it's kind of the optimal position with the center of gravity. Does it cool off really quickly or does it take a while to cool down? The batteries did take a little while. Actually, I, my understanding, I'm not positive about this, but I've heard about something that makes a different battery. These are um, NiPad, not NiPad. NiPad batteries. Yeah. What is that say? Yeah. 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 I'm guessing they're considering moving the lithium? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Did you raise the boom? Is it called the boom? It's called the arm. Okay, the arm. That's pretty cool. So the overheating problem is just the batteries, not like motors or a computer or anything else on it. Uh, so the batteries is just the overheating problem and no other equipment? So how fast can it go? I think you told me already. Max speed is about 4.5 miles per hour. Okay, that's not actually that fast. And in cream speed, it's about an inch. 